Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today is New Year's Day. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2021. In a desperate attempt to cling on to the festive feeling for just a few more hours, I thought I would do a very quick review of this Dementor figure from the Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure Game. Why is this in any way festive? Well, I guess if you're being generous, a Dementor looks a little bit like the ghost of Christmas yet to come, but more so it's because this was a gift from my wife for Christmas. I bet she never expected to ever have to buy me anything Harry Potter related. But of course, if you have been following the channel for any length of time, you will know that I recently picked up the Harry Potter Miniatures Adventure game and was pleasantly surprised by it to the point where I decided I wanted to flesh out the number of characters and creatures I had for the game. I picked up the troll, I picked up the unicorn, I picked up the Weasley twins just because I found them cheap. But there were a few other things I really wanted. This isn't a game that I like enough to collect everything. I'm not a big fan of the theme, so I'm not rushing out to get every single miniature for it. But there were certain things that I wanted. I did want a Dementor, and there are just a few other characters I would like to pick up down the line. And this particular pack is an adventure pack, the same as the Troll and the Unicorn. Slightly different to the character packs in that you also get a scenario, and you get creatures rather than new characters. Let's take a look. Of course the main thing you are getting for your money is the Dementor figure which is a good size. It actually fits on one of these honking 60 millimeter bases that night models seem to be using quite a bit for this particular line. Uh, it's massive, huge 60 mil base for the figure. And the miniature itself is pretty much what I've come to expect from this particular line. The uh, detailing is nice, the sculpts are nice, the casting is a bit messy. For a start, you can see here that um, when it was cast, the actual uh, strip that sits into the base of the miniature, um, it's kind of just broken off here, and I don't know if any of the actual miniature has broken off with it. I don't believe it has, I think the miniature itself is intact, but there's definitely a bit of the uh, strip from the bottom missing there. And furthermore, it's a resin miniature, so a little bit brittle, and there's underfill. Underfill everywhere. There's a lot of cleanup required on this. There's flashing. There is, um, if I show you how it goes together, oh, it's trying to get away from me. If I show you how it goes together, it's pretty easy. The instructions are included in the box, but you don't really need them because um, they have keyed the parts at least. So you can see that that part will fit on this part. Um, not a bad fit there, and because it is a tattered, wispy, ghost-like character, um, it doesn't matter so much if there's a little bit of gapping. Um, that's just going to add to the ethereal effect. Although, of course, a bit of green stuff will resolve that issue anyway. But with those two bits there, we then have the third part, which is supposed to sit up under there like that to create this sort of sense that it is flying. I cannot show you exactly how it goes together because um, there is a huge amount of underfill under there that, that all needs to be cut out just to get this top part to fit onto the lower assembly of the miniature. And that's a bit messy and fiddly. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it's just something else you have to worry about um, when you're dealing with these miniatures. They are not as uh, beginner friendly as they really should be. They're very flaky. They've got a lot of feathering, a lot of flashing. It's just a lot of cleanup on these, a lot more than I think I have ever seen on any other miniatures line. I'm sure other miniatures line exist that have this kind of uh, cleanup required, but this is certainly uh, the high end of cleanup for me and really more than I would like to be doing. Because you have to be really careful as well. You have to look really closely. For example, I'm not even sure if this is going to come out on camera here, but I've just noticed there's like a flat piece there, like a, a little flat bridge. I'm pretty sure that's not just supposed to be a flat bit that cuts off there. Um, I'm not sure if, if that's supposed to line up with something or whether that's just a, like a little underfill that needs to be trimmed out. For a company that specializes in making miniatures, I do expect a cleaner finish than this. But 
Once it is cleaned up, once it is assembled, I think it would look really rather nice. As with the other creature adventure packs, you get two cards for the stats for the creature. You have one card, which is for if you want to purchase a Dementor to add to your team for competitive games. You can see he costs nine galleons. And then there is another card, which is basically identical, except it has the cost for a solo or cooperative game. And this solo cooperative game, they, they always give you the cards for it, but there's only one cooperative scenario in the rules book for the game. And I haven't seen any other cooperative scenarios yet, so I don't even know if there are any others. It's almost like this is um, an element of the game that they haven't really explored properly yet. Uh, maybe it's covered in one of the larger big box expansions that I have no intentions of investing in. I don't know. But yeah, it seems strange that you always get these uh, cooperative cards, yet the cooperative experience or the solo gameplay experience isn't up to much at the moment. But anyway, we have our Dementor card here, which shows uh, they have no mastery. They have a defense of two. They have a cunning of two. Magic five, temper ten, courage four, wisdom one. They don't have a spell. Instead, they have an innate ability. It is, of course, the Dementor's Kiss, which is a physical attack with a bonus of three, causes two damage, has a range of two, with the special ability that if this attack is successful, the target model cannot perform basic actions in its next activation, which is mean. It's a nasty thing to do to people. Bogs them down. Interrupts their plans. Of course, we also have a list of traits here. Dementors are beasts. They have the fast ability, which means um, they can move quicker over open terrain. They have the fly ability, which means they can treat uh, uh, terrain of any kind as open terrain. They can just fly over it. They have the horde ability, which means you can take more than one of them if you want to invest in several miniatures. I believe there is only one sculpt for the Dementor, though, so your army would look very samey if you did that. And they have physical resistance one, which means they can add one success when they are rolling it against a physical attack. You also get one of these quest cards, and it is pretty much exactly the same as the quest card that came with the unicorn and the quest card that came with the troll. And I mentioned in my videos for those expansions that I didn't really understand this card. The idea is with quests is you create a deck of them at the start of the game, you draw them as you're playing, it gives you ways to gain additional victory points to ultimately win the game. This card, and indeed the Troll and the Unicorn card, grants your opponent an extra character. It says your opponent must place one Dementor model within five spaces of any board edge. The Dementor is controlled by the opposing player until the end of the game. If the Dementor is removed from play before the game ends, score three victory points and discard this card. This is the only way this Dementor model can award victory points to any player. So, it's an opportunity to score three victory points, which is great. But, in doing that, you are gifting your opponent a free Dementor. So they get their army as normal, and then at some point during the game, if you draw this card, they just get a Dementor. And as you can see from the uh, the stat card that I've just shown you, Dementors aren't pushovers. They are problematic unless you have an Expecto Patronum spell card that you can kind of zap them away with. So I'm not sure why you would ever want to add this card to your quest deck. There are other quests that you get in the base game that are easier to resolve, easier to uh, score, and will not grant your opponent extra characters. Imagine if you put this card and the troll card and the unicorn card all in your quest deck and drew them all. Your opponent would have a whole menagerie of nasty beasties to chase you down with, and there would be no hope for your survival. In addition, you also get one new spell card. It is, of course, Expecto Patronum, the spell you would require in order to fight a Dementor. I don't believe you get any Expecto Patronum cards in the base game, but Harry Potter does have it as an innate spell on his character sheet. So this is the first Expecto Patronum card I think I have in my collection. Obviously, it is intended primarily for fending off Dementors. You can also use it to get a defense buff in general. But of course, this is the card you would expect to have. I would have expected to have several, and that is because the game also comes 
with a new scenario. The scenario is printed on this included leaflet, which also has our assembly instructions for the Dementor. And it's a pretty straightforward scenario. We have a three board map, player A and player B at opposite ends, a Dementor in the center. And what you're effectively going to have here is a game of Pong, because the scenario says that each team must have at least one model with Expecto Patronum spells, and you can cast Expecto Patronum on the Dementor to move it around the board, and each time you affect the Dementor, you will score three victory points, and the Dementor will also take damage. Eventually, of course, the Dementor will be destroyed, either by taking enough damage or by being pushed into a corner and then having Expecto Patronum cast on them in such a way that they cannot move, in which case they are destroyed that way. So really, you're just batting this Dementor backwards and forwards across the map, trying to score the most victory points. And that's fine. Uh, I, I guess my biggest issue with it is, again, they're asking you to create two forces here, and they say at least one model should have Expecto Patronum, although they call them Expecto Patronus spells there. Is it Expecto Patronus? I thought it was Expecto Patronum, which creates a Patronus. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan. Uh, am I wrong? Are they wrong? I don't know. Anyway, um, it's saying that you need at least one model with it. It would make sense to have several models with the spell, but they only give you one spell card with Expecto Patronum on it. So you're either going to have to photocopy them and, and make your own, or you're going to have to buy other packs that have copies of that spell in, and I do not like that. I think they could have at least included two spells in this pack so that you could do the bare minimum, which is two forces, one Expecto Patronum each. Makes sense. Include two cards, because that is the bare minimum requirements for playing this mission. Of course, if you've got Harry Potter on one side, you get Expecto Patronum as standard, but you may not want to run with Harry Potter. You may want to use different characters, so they should include the cards you need, and that bugs me. That bugs me more than anything else. That bugs me more than the slightly rough casting on the miniature. But anyway, that's it. That's the scenario. It's pretty straightforward, but I do have to give them credit for trying to think up different things with these scenarios. I think each scenario that I have got does something a little bit different. Um, they may not be massive changes to the standard flow of the game, but there's always something new to think about. They have made an effort to give you new challenges and I think that's more than could be said for a lot of games where scenarios tend to be a little bit uh, samey after a while. But anyway, that's your lot and I guess my feelings for it are pretty much the same as they have been with all of these other Harry Potter packs. I don't really know why I like the Harry Potter game as much as I do. I'm not a big fan of the theme, the game is a bit rough, the rules are badly written, a lot of the components are really poor quality. The miniatures are really nice, but the actual molding isn't as clean and crisp as I've come to expect from other companies. And I don't really like dealing with resin anyway. I think the way they pack the miniatures with the bare minimum number of cards to actually use them is a bit tight. They could easily include extra cards with each of these packs for very little extra cost, and it would just make the game more accessible and more enjoyable. So there's a lot of things against it, but I just find that when the game is set up and when I'm playing it, I am just finding it quite compelling, the uh, the wizard on wizard combat, the use of spells more so than physical attacks. I find it more interesting than I ever thought I would. But again, this expansion is very much a mixed bag. My wife did not pay full price for this, and um, I have made it quite clear to her that she should never pay full price for any of this Harry Potter stuff because it is all overpriced at full retail. But if you can pick this up for a decent price, it is a nice miniature. It does give you a new scenario. It does give you a new um, option for building your forces. Um, who doesn't want to have a Dementor flying around the table? Just, as always, temper your expectations. There are issues with this expansion. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.